All right guys, how's it going? Welcome back. Today I'm going to do a second part of the Rate My Ride video. I got that many requests, I thought it'd be a bit unfair if I didn't try and feature more of your cars. So here we go. First one was sent in by Mikhail in Finland and he's got an Audi A6 Allroad. Now the Mark 1 A6 Allroad was a terrible, hateful car. Very problematic, very expensive to repair, terrible to drive, not good looking. The list goes on. But that particular one, that's a nice car. I can see the appeal there, because so you've got you've got all-wheel drive, you've got a higher riding position. It just looks chunky, it looks like it could go anywhere. I approve, I'd actually I'd actually have one of those cars. I like that very much. Next one, this is a strange one. Um Paul White has sent in a photograph of his 1996 VW Vento 1.9 TDI, owned since December 1996. That's some commitment, isn't it? Currently, uh, currently at 308,000 miles, and it's a member of the family. I bet it is. That looks really clean, doesn't it? You know what? I'd forgotten that the Vento existed. It's just one of those cars that you don't see anymore. I'm not a fan of that era of, um, of VW, to be honest. Very, very drab and boring, in my opinion. But it's a test testament to it, isn't it? Looks very clean. Quite like the colour too, actually. So yeah, well done to you, Paul, for um, for keeping it on the road for so long. Julie Matthews has sent in a picture of her Jaguar XE. That's a good colour combination, actually. Dark blue with the black wheels. That looks cool. I like that. I'm not a huge fan of the XE. I'd rather have the XF. But I do like the way the XE drives. So yeah, good choice there, Julie. Stephen Tideswell has sent in a picture of his Vauxhall VXR Astra. Now, I'm not a fan of hot hatches particularly. But there's something about that particular one that looks really cool, doesn't it? Look at the size of those wheels, though. I bet the ride is horrendous. Yeah, cool car though, that, Steve. I quite like that. I like the colour. And it's not too... It's quite subtle, isn't it, and understated. It's not too uh, too yobbish. I bet it goes well, too. Although, I'd prefer that S-Class in the background. But yeah, cool car. Ross Rankin is sent in a picture of his 2013 Vauxhall Corsa. If you listen carefully, you'll be able to hear the timing chain rattling from here. Uh, he says, here we are then, my 2013 Corsa SE. That's a high spec, so it's going to have heated seats, heated steering wheel. Uh, incredibly cheap to own, with a lot of tasty features like heated seats, heated... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, could have gone for a Polo or set for the same amount of money, and it will be very basic. That's quite right, actually. They do offer great value for money. And if you service them, they will be reliable, but most people don't. That's where you run into issues with head gaskets and bad timing chains, because most people don't change the oil for, well, for five years. But yeah, reasonable car. I, I don't like them because I've ugh, just had too many problems with them. But, um, but yeah, no, they're all right. Ian Yowd has sent in a picture of his very blurry Jaguar XJR. Yeah, I love the X308. Good choice there, Ian. And also he's got a white L322. That looks great in white, actually. It's like an off-white. It looks like a police car almost, actually. I like that. I approve. Very nice car. From Manchester, too. Next one, Liam Flavin has sent in a picture of his, what is it, let me get the model right, it's Mercedes 280 SE. It's only got 94,000 miles on the clock. That's gorgeous, isn't it? I love those old Mercedes. My neighbour in Spain used to have one of those, but he had the, the 420 SEL in like a beige colour. And yeah, they're getting very desirable, aren't they? That's a cool car. If I had unlimited money and garage space, I would have one of those. 100%. And he's also got a 2019 VW Passat R-Line that I use as my daily driver. Done 13,000 miles so far. The Passat's a very boring car, isn't it? But that R-Line does look quite sporty, doesn't it? And if it was that or a Monday or an Insignia, then I would choose that every single time. Jonathan Huggins has sent in a picture of his 308 GTI. Now, I don't like Peugeot's or hatch, hot, hat, hot, hat, hotches, hot hatches. Um... But there's something about that 308 that looks quite cool, doesn't it? I like the wheels. I like the twin exhaust. I don't like the way the rev counter goes the opposite way. That does my head in a little bit. But yeah, it's a little bit of a left field choice, that, isn't it? It's not as yobbish as a GTI or something, so... Mm, I wouldn't buy one with my own money, don't get me wrong. But I bet it's quite good fun to drive, that. Service it, though, and it should, it should be all right, I suppose. Gary Shah has sent in a picture of his Audi Q3 TDI Quattro. The TDI Quattro is probably the one to go for, I suppose. I don't really like the Q3, though. It just looks weird from the back. It's like a pimped-up A1. It just looks strange. I'd rather have a Q5, but they do drive very well. I'll give them that. That is an S-line as well, I think, because it's got the LED headlights. 
Yeah, I can I can see why you bought it. I, I wouldn't have bought it myself though. But yeah, reasonable choice. I'd have bought a Q5, but anyway. Matthew Alcock has sent in a picture of his Toyota Land Cruiser, 2011 Land Cruiser. That's quite cool, and it'll be, be indestructible, won't it? But it's it will probably rust, especially if you're, you're out near the water there. So make sure you wax oil it, make sure you underseal it, and um, yeah, should last forever, shouldn't it? Next up, Daniel Porteous from Stockport, local lad, has sent in a picture of his BMW 4 Series diesel. Now, I like the 4 Series, it's a great looking car. The 420 diesel is a bit boring and bland to drive, but the 430 diesel is pretty epic. He's blacked out the front grille, which I don't really like, to be honest, and he's gone with a 3D printed reg, which, again, I detest. I don't know why that's so crazy, it does, does not look good. Anyway, let's see which model that is, then. Check him a little app checker. So that is a BMW 430 diesel M Sport Auto. Oh, in blue. It says blue, I thought it was black. Yeah, that's a great car, that, Dan, actually. Well done. That's a great choice. I've got to interrupt briefly just to say a thank you to today's video sponsor. Now, today's video is sponsored by Harry's. You've probably heard me talk about Harry's in previous videos, but if you haven't, they are a supplier of top quality shaving kits. Now, traditional razor blades are just a pain in the neck to buy, aren't they? They're expensive to buy, for starters. It's just an unpleasant experience. Whereas with Harry's, you subscribe to them, and every month they just send you more razor blades. It's as easy as that. You never have to go out and shop for them ever again. I think they've really shaken up the razor blade industry. Before I started using Harry's, I hardly ever replaced my razor blades, which meant they were always blunt, which turned a quick morning shave into torture. Once you sign up with Harry's, they'll send you this shaving kit in the post. And this is what it consists of. It's all really beautifully presented. And if you click the link below, you'll even get this free shower gel. You get some shave gel with aloe vera. Aloe vera. And you get the nice razor blade too, which is weighted and textured. It's all just very nicely done. And it's cheap too, because you can buy these razors from as little as £1.75 each. I've worked with Harry's a few times before now, and I've had comments from people on Instagram and Twitter telling me that they've signed up and it's actually really impressed them. So if you click the link below, you can do the same thing. And as I mentioned, you'll get that free shower gel. You can start your subscription today by going to harrys.com forward slash highpeakautos. If you order your free trial set, you only pay the 4 for delivery. By doing this, you'll be supporting my channel, which I greatly appreciate, by the way. And you'll also be giving some money to charity because Harry's donate 1% of global sales to non-profit organisations that provide men's mental health care, which is just a nice touch. Anyway, back to the Rate My Ride video. So, Alex has sent in a picture of his 2008 Saab 93 Aero TTID six-speed manual. That's the one to go for, isn't it? The TTID is a twin turbo diesel, two litre, and also the Aero is the best spec you can get. So that is the uh, that is the one to go for. That will have heated leather seats, auxiliary input in the uh, centre console there. They're great cars, they really are. Jerome Wright has written in to say, Hi there, Matt, please rate my ride a 2014 low mileage top spec Mark II TT, which I've been driving for the last six months. I would love to hear your thoughts on the Mark II in a Should You Buy video. You've done the Mark I and III. I have. I keep meaning to do a Mark II, but I haven't had one for a while. So the next one I do, I'll do a video with, because I think they're great value. Great value cars. Great to drive. As I've mentioned and probably bored you all to death, I had a 2012 TTS convertible, which was a real favourite car of mine, actually. No, I think they're great cars. Now, on to an interesting one from James Hamilton. Greetings from Australia, Matt. Please find attach a couple of my photos. Uh, 2019 Kia Stinger GT, 3.3 litre twin turbo V6. Goes from 0 to 100 kilometres in 4.8 seconds, and it's completely stock. That's my kind of car. I love that. I think that's a great colour. I also like how he's replaced the Kia badge on the back with one which says Stinger in nice italic writing. I've got to get a Kia Stinger GT on the channel, haven't I? I'd, I'd seriously consider having one of those cars, actually. I think they look great. Four exhausts, way quicker than you'd ever need. What's not to like? Yep, I approve there, James. Very good. Also, James runs the Cars From Oz channel on uh, Instagram, so go and check him out. Next up, Josip Horvat has sent in a picture of his BMW 3 Series. That looks nice. Nice white car, very clean looking. Nice wheels. Yep, yeah, very nice. But it's auto too. M Sport, heated seats. Yeah, very nice car that. Nice car. I don't, I've got no idea what engine's in it, but um, hopefully a six cylinder. But probably, probably a four. Good car. Sam McCarthy sent him what could have been a very interesting email, but he's forgot to attach a photo of his car. Here it is, and then he's forgot to uh, attach it. My Audi Coupe, 16 valve, 1993. Sam, 
I'd have liked to have seen that, Sam, to be fair. So, anyway, that's a pity. Now, Aiden has sent in, Hi, here are all the cars we have right now. Aiden. He's got some interesting cars, Aiden. He's got a Mark IV Golf V6 4 motion, which is very rare, which I definitely approve of. I love the Mark IV Golf. It wasn't the most popular, but it's, in my opinion, my, my favourite era of Golf. The 1.9 TDI GT that they did was superb. Next up, he's got a Focus, which, yeah, boring and bland, but you can't go wrong with a Focus, can you? Although that one's diesel, which I would avoid. I think I'd rather have a petrol. Oh, now it gets interesting. He's got a Audi RS4 in Sepang Blue. That's gorgeous, isn't it? And a 5-litre Mustang convertible. And what looks like an S500 in the background. You've got a cool car collection, Aiden. I approve. And an XJ. And a smart car. Hmm. Let the side down there a little bit. And a 645, is that? Convertible with a Christmas tree. Cool cars. Very well done. Next up, Asif has sent in a picture of his 220 horsepower petrol L&K Skoda Superb in petrol blue. That's a good colour. I don't think I've seen one of those before. Nice wheels too. They look like turbines. Yeah, there's not an awful lot to say about them, is there? Only that they're very, very good cars. Um, yeah. <sighs> Boring, but good. I don't know what else to say about them. Rowan has sent in a picture of his E53 BMW X5 3 litre diesel in white. That's a lovely car. I love the E53 X5. That's got the nicer grill too. It looks like an IS grill. A uh, huge fan from South Africa. Thanks very much. I've never been there. I've got to uh, got to go one of these days. That's a lovely car. I approve very much. Nice clean car that. Damien Taylor, rate my ride. This sounds like a fun video. Here's my 2.2 litre four cylinder Series 3 Lotus Esprit from 1986. Looking forward to see if it makes the cut for the video. That's a cool car, very cool. I've only been in one once, and it was the most claustrophobic experience. It was like being being buried alive. And I didn't know they did a four-cylinder. I thought they were all sixes and eights, but um, that's a cool car, that. Yeah, I like that. Next one, Michelle Davis has sent in a picture of her 5 Series BMW. 520 Diesel M Sport. Regards, Michelle Lee. P.S. Love your channel. That's a great colour. I can't work out whether that's white or silver or... It looks like a crayon grey, that's... That's lovely. M Sport 2. I'm not a huge fan of the wheels, to be honest, Michelle. I don't like the 3D printed reg, which everybody seems to go for, but great looking car. Even better if it was a 530 diesel. Next one, Jamie Lee. I don't know if that's Jamie Lee Curtis, but looking by the car, I don't think it is. It doesn't look like something she'd drive. Is it a is that a Mark 7 Fiesta? Mark 7 Fiesta? I'm, I'm losing track of Mark's generations of Fiestas. Um, that is completely hideous. I would... Would I rather walk than that? No, because I don't really like walking. I'd rather have it than walk, but that's about as, as complimentary as I can get. It's lowered and messed with, and you've got a 3D printed reg. Mm, no, I don't like the wheels. There's very little I like about that car. Ordinarily, the Fiesta is a great car, but just not, not that one. Next up, Phil and Mason sent in a picture of his BMW 530 diesel M Sport Touring. I bought this 530 diesel after watching your 5 Series video. Very happy with it. Good choice, Phil. There's just something about that that era of 5 Series. I love them. And they're great to drive. Quick enough, economical enough, spacious enough. Just a great family car. Now, this next one's a bit of a weird one. Callum has sent in a picture of his car collection. Now, he's got several cars here. Um, the first one is a Mercedes A210 AMG, which I didn't even know they made. I had to Google this. I thought he just stuck some badges on from eBay, but no. That is a very rare car indeed, Callum. I still, I'm not sure I'd have one, to be fair, but uh, very rare. Next up, a Porsche Boxster with a hard top. That's an early one, year 2000 on an X. Yeah, I like that. It looks nice and clean. Good colour. They're very, very soon becoming um, classics, aren't they, those? And next up, oh dear, this is where it all goes downhill. A Rover Metro on a P. Oh dear, that's terrible. That is a, a Rover 114 when they tried to rebadge it. It's not called a Mini Metro now, and it's called a Rover Metro. No, wouldn't have one. Although he does have a sense of humour because there's a, what I thought was a National Trust sticker in the window. It's actually a National Rust. So, no, I wouldn't I wouldn't have that, but no. The other two are fairly cool. Next up, Andreas has sent in a picture of his Land Rover Discovery and his E39 BMW. Now, the, the Discovery is lovely looking. Very clean looking, totally original. I like the side steps. I like the fact it's colour coded come from Hallam Brothers so it'll be well serviced and well looked after so great choice with the Discovery the E39 on the other hand is absolutely atrocious cutouts in the bonnet it looks like something that that Vin Diesel would drive 
No, I'm not a fan. I love the E39, don't get me wrong, but um, not that particular one. Absolutely not. Thanks for sending it in, though. I appreciate it. Next up, Alistair Smith has sent in some of his cars. Now, he's got a Lotus Elise. Yeah, I should probably try and get one of those on the channel. A Caterham, I think that is. An old Beetle, which I don't really like. Mini, uh, is that Mini? What do they call that one? The weird one with the, with the back door. Um, Countryman? Clubman. Mini Clubman. Mm, I like the weirdness about them, but that's pretty much it. Next up, Neil Buchan has sent in a picture of his Jaguar XKR. I've just picked up this Jag, Jag, today. Looking forward to enjoying it, I bet. That's lovely, isn't it? Try and get that back to original. Or, I mean, it looks pretty original now, but just keep it original and make it as nice as you possibly can and then just keep it forever. That's a beautiful car. Oh, yeah, I love that. Next up, Tim from Winchester has sent in a picture of his 2005 BMW 645 with 70k. They're great cars. I've mentioned this before, I know, but I had a 2004 645 as my own personal car for a bit and loved it. Silky smooth V8, plenty of power, big comfortable cruiser. That's a lovely car, that. In a great colour too, I approve. Next up, Ewan has sent in a picture of his MR2, which I'm not a huge fan of. They're great fun to drive, but I wouldn't buy one. Wouldn't buy one. Next up, a Suzuki Ignis. I quite like the white wheels. It looks like a looks like a cartoon, doesn't it? And last but not least, a TD5 Discovery. Is it a TD5 or a 300 series? No, it's a TD5. In Epsom Green, I think. I like the look of those, but they drive, oh, they're, they're atrocious to drive, they're absolutely terrible. I'd rather have that thing in the background. So yeah, a bit of a weird choice of cars there, Ewan. I can see I can see why you bought each one, to be fair. They're not my cup of tea, but um, each to their own. Next one, Pav has sent in a picture of his Seat Leon FR with a 1.4 TSI engine, 150 horsepower. That's a great looking car, actually. I, I'm, a, I'm a fan of Seats. I, um, I know it's basically a... A golf, isn't it, in a in a flamenco dress? But it's just something a little bit, a little bit more unique about them. Yeah, I like that. I think if I was buying a, a quick golf or something, I would look at the Seat option. Very good. Next one, Jack Miles has sent in a picture of his Discovery Three SE. I bought it about six months ago. The SE has everything that an HSE has, apart from the sunroof, so I don't have to worry about them leaking. <laughs> that's a very pragmatic Land Rover owner. That's exactly how you have to be. That looks looks nice and clean. That to be fair. And yeah, no um, no sunroof, so so no wet necks. Next up, Rob May has sent in a picture of his BMW 140i with a with a Stone Island reg plate. Something about a Stone Island tracksuit and driving around with your hood up. Yes, I did say that, didn't I? I did say that. Only because <laughs> only because BMW one, M140s are just driven by chavs usually. No, I don't know Rob, so I don't I don't wish to insult him. That will be a great car to drive, rear-wheel drive, loads of power, loads of fun, but the ride will be appalling, it will get stolen off your driver without a doubt, and every time I'm behind one, it's usually somebody somebody driving it like this. There's usually a potent smell of marijuana coming from it, and they've usually got a Stone Island tracksuit on. And rather suspiciously, they never seem to work. The people, I, I mean, not the uh, not the cars. Ash Dawson has sent in a picture of his 2005 uh, Jaguar X-Type 2.0-litre diesel Sovereign. Now, I love the Sovereign spec, but to get one in, to get one as a diesel manual is just it just shouldn't be available in a Jaguar. It should be a 3.0-litre V6. I particularly like the Estates as well. Nice colour, nice spec, but yeah, the manuals are hard work, aren't they? The clutch is always heavy, and those diesels aren't particularly reliable. Next up, Jacob Stein. Hey Matt, I'm over in the US, here are my two never-ending projects. A 2000 Discovery 2, which I don't really like, and a 2000 XK8. That metallic green S-Type R in the back is also mine as well. Cheers, Jacob. Right, let's let's start then. So the Discovery 2, I don't really like. They're horrible to drive. Although that being stateside will be a V8, won't it? Which do sound well. And I can't see the point of going off-road, really, as a as a form of pleasure or entertainment. To be to be bounced around like that on your days off isn't my idea of fun. But each to their own. Now next up the Jaguar looks absolutely gorgeous. Blue with the tan upholstery is probably the best choice. With a blue mohair hood. That's that's a beautiful car. And it doesn't have a, a jumping jag on the bonnet. So I very much approve. 
Also, that British Racing Green S-Type R is just gorgeous, isn't it? I love the S-Type, particularly in that colour. So, yeah, Jacob, you've got, well, in the words of Meatloaf, two out of three ain't bad. Next up, while we're still on the subject of Land Rovers, Harrison Lockwood has sent in a picture of his P38. It's a 21-year-old Range Rover 4-litre V8, which is nine months older than me. That's a great choice, actually. That is Oslo Blue, I think. It's got the wrong wheels on. Um, the 4 litre is better than 4.6. The 4.6 engine can have issues, but the 4 litre is way more reliable. And they sound great, don't they? I would, if I were you, I would just keep that forever, Harrison, because the, the prices are on the rise. I've been looking at buying one this week, actually. I don't know why. I've got no purpose for one, nowhere to store it. But yeah, Range Rover Isis. Next one, Matt Goldsbury sent in a picture of his Subaru Impreza WRX. Now, they're the car. Right, let me explain. Ten years ago, the Subaru Impreza was like the Golf R of today. It meant that you were usually didn't work, like to help yourself to other people's possessions in the middle of the night, usually had an ankle tag, that sort of, all those stereotypes. But now all those sorts of people now drive Golf Rs, which means civilised people like you and I can go out and buy a Subaru Impreza finally, which, you know, you probably should because they're great cars. Now, last but not least, Nikolai uh, has sent me an email. Hey, Matt, my name is Nikolai, uh, and this is my 2007 Jaguar XK. I've owned it since I was 17. What a car to have at 17. When I bought it off my neighbour in Florida who neglected it. That's a pity. I've spent two years fixing it up and taking it on long trips. That is beautiful, Nikolai. To have one of those cars at 17, I just... That's, that's really cool. If I were you, I'd just keep that forever. They're beautiful, aren't they? They're so timeless really want an XK now. Why have you done this to me? That's a beautiful car. So I think that's it. Thanks very much for watching. I hope that was entertaining. Uh, it was certainly interesting seeing what you all drive. And yeah, you've all, got, you've all gone up in my estimations. So thanks very much for watching. Make sure you give the video a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't done already. You can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. I'll leave the link below. And yeah, cheers guys. I'll see you next time.